Hello everyone, my name is Uthurus, and welcome back to some Kerbal Space Program. Um, we have landed on the, not landed on the moon, oh boy, that would be a rough, rough time if I was doing that right now. Um, we, we've gone to the moon, we've orbited uh, the moon and came back, and uh, obviously that yielded a great boon of science. Uh, currently we are all the way through tier 4, um, and we're now saving up to start getting tier 5 unlocks in the tech tree in Kerbal Space Program. Um, <clears throat> I wanna go into the administration building and actually maybe s look at some of these items here. I wouldn't mind this. Unpaid research program takes takes some of our re reputation gains and yields one science per reputation gain. Um, and I wouldn't mind setting this up uh, I don't know, I guess 25%. Let's see if we can do it. So 25% of our reputation gains will start yielding science. Sure, great. So we are yielding science now uh, from just pure gaining reputation, which is pretty neat. Um, we'll see how well that pays off long-term. If we go to mission control, let's take a look at some missions we can actually do here. We have, um, looks like science data from space around the moon. So we're gonna accept this one. There's also science data from surface around the moon. Um, I'm hesitant to accept this one for now. So we're gonna leave it here for a moment. Um, looks like we have some rescue people in orbit, which could be good for us. They pay decently well. Turn her safely. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I think, I think, um, we'll go ahead and maybe do this one. So we're, we're gonna rescue a fellow Kerbal from orbit, uh, to start this episode instead of going straight to the moon. That's gonna allow us to kind of work on the vehicle launch system that we have here. And if we take a look, um, we're at currently MK3 here, which took us to the moon and back. Great, wonderful. Um, the only issue with this system is that it only has one seat. And with one seat comes problems when you're trying to do a rescue mission. So we're actually going to side, kind of side lane that, and we might use this. This is a KV-2P reentry module. Um, it has, okay, there's, there's problems with this. I've never gotten one of these things to fly very well. The shape of it, um, is not conducive for, for great maneuverability. There's also no control surfaces on this um, or control wheels on this. So it's kind of just a capsule to just sit in. Um, but screw it, it's the, only, it's the only two seater that we have, I think. So we will take, uh, I think Jebediah will go on this mission. You know, he, he's, he's been kind of cleared for operations. So we'll bring Jebediah on this. And let's go ahead, grab a heat shield. Um, and this is just to go up and down. We're not gonna do anything super special with it. I'm hearing noises. Um, so we will grab a parachute for the top. That obviously helps the aerodynamics. And someone is just destroying their carpet by like, I don't know, this sounds like they're vacuuming way too hard. I need to change some settings there, guys. Um, and we'll get a little drove shoot on here. So this is the only thing that's really gonna return to the surface. Everything else is gonna be mm, optional. And we will grab a coupler, bloop, just like that. Okay, a coupler there. Let's get the drove shoot ironed out. All right, cool. And do we have any good control surfaces? Command and control. We have one inline reaction reel, wheel, and uh, we're gonna probably take that. And let's just move this inside just a little bit. I don't like fully clipping parts and hiding parts inside pieces. I like I like having some of it really stick out. So <laughs> it's, it's adorable. It's like it has a little hat and has a little face. Um, we can call it Wilbur. So from here, let's talk about fuel and what we need to kind of orbit. 
I think um, just a poodle engine will be enough just like that to get us around. In fact, if we look at vacuum, I mean, that's 1,000 sort of uh, delta V on there. We're gonna, of course, change the variant. And we'll go to coupling, we'll go to the main stage that is going to probably get us there. Um, in fact, we're gonna, uh, MK, uh, let's, let's call this um, rescue pod. <laughs> rescue pod, okay, save this. Um, I wanna go back out and we should be able to just track kind of what orbit they are in. Oh. That's a very just normal orbit. Uh, altitude is about 20 or 77,000 and 79,000. Um, it will be easier for us to go outside the orbital plane, let them catch up to us, and then we go down to it. So I don't know, probably like an orbit of 100,000 would be ideal here, I think. So just keep that in mind on what we need to do. Back to the vehicle assembly building to put together this. So this, um, we'll see. We shall see. Let's go engines, fuel, and let's do a swivel here. Do a couple there. I don't know why, I, I just over-engineer everything. Okay, for, so from here, let's maybe widen this. All right. And put an actual kind of stage on here, right? Some, some sort of like proper booster. So something like that. And engine-wise, we don't really have anything that works. Um, but maybe we can use like four of these, something like that, to give us a lot of thrust and control. These are, you know, swivel engines, so they are no control. Maybe we can rotate these out just a touch, just give it a little bit of a look on it. How's that? I like that. That's kind of cool. That's got that's got a vibe for it. So this <laughs> this thing looks so phallic. Um. All right. Now we just need some side boosters to help us get up there, and we will do. No point in doing uh, liquid boosters because we don't have like the capacity to do asparagus staging just yet. So we'll do something like this and then I guess something like this. For the overall feel and vacuum, we got 5,000 Delta V, um, but this is full weight, right? So hopefully we'll use the um, thumpers to get us up there initially to kind of start us off. We'll switch to kind of this stage while we're still in atmosphere um, and we can gain the control of, of these four engines and then we can kind of go from there and see how this works. It, it may may not work. We're gonna be finding out real soon though. Just make sure everything is staged correctly. Okay. I think we're about ready. Technically, if I time the launch correctly, I might be able to to meet up with it, right? Because this this thing is, well, we'll treat it like um, a, a good practice rendezvous, um, as if we are training for the moon here. So um, I want this capsule to kind of come around do, 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 do. And be like back here, about 90 degrees. Ah, uh, no, maybe a little bit past, maybe here. Okay, let's set his target. 
And uh, we are ready to launch. Let's do this. Jebediah. Here we go. So we're going to launch pretty vertical. Initially. That's coming around the correct way, right? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Okay, very vertical launch so far. Just passing 100 meters a second. It's when I start trying to turn this thing. That's, that's when the control is going to just be uh, near impossible. So, we'll do that. Start the turn over here. It's a little, it's a little, little wiggly. Wiggle, wiggle. Okay. I don't want to hit the atmosphere too hard. Is this thing with with the way this interacts with the atmosphere is not too uh, forgiving? I also want this stage to last a little bit longer than it currently is. We're just doing like a 60 degree. Oh no. Okay, we're doing a backflip. This is this is normal. Jebediah is just showing off, guys. Look at that. Nailed it. Perfect. All right. So we can't slow down. We'll lose too much control here. So let's not slow down. And instead, speed up, because when in doubt, more speed. Start to go over a little bit more. All right, now that we have pretty much escaped the atmosphere for the most part, should be okay. And I think I have turned a little early. We're way ahead of this thing. Bit of a problem. With that. Yeah, yeah. So we're way ahead. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to ex expend some extra fuel here to uh, go out past. And then we'll catch it on the way back inside is really what we're gonna have to do. So we'll go out to there, say, um, out to Apple Apps. I don't know why, why can't I do a uh, orbit maneuver? That's kind of concerning, but we'll speed up a little bit. Maybe because I am still in the atmosphere? No? Okay. I don't know why I can't uh, give any sort of orbital maneuver node. But that's fine. Alright, now. We'll just let this thing catch up. A little bit. Grade. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just let it catch up until until it's like a little bit behind us, I would say. So we probably didn't go as high as no no we went about a hundred and fifteen. So we did we did you know go up above it. We're letting it catch up now. Too much longer and I'd say about there it's probably fine so now if we point retrograde we should be able to just kind of deorbit a bit see if we get uh, a encounter okay 
separation 30 kind of kilometers here I'm gonna try and get that as close as possible 28 27 that honestly might be as close as possible with what we have, which is totally fine. So I'm going to switch our navigation to target. We'll go prograde, or no, we'll go retrograde first. Okay, so what this is going to do is, as we get closer, and our window is going to be kind of around periaps, you know. Um, as we get closer, what we'll do is start getting our target speed basically to zero. And what that will do is kind of match our orbits at that point. And so from there, it's just a 30 kilometer kind of burn. It's a, you know, not too bad. It, this isn't, you know, the most efficient rendezvous I've ever done, but it should be relatively effective. So target is about 118 kilometers a second. So we'll um, point retrograde here. Get that down to like zero. Okay. And then we'll point prograde. And we'll point right at it. And I wanna line up this yellow uh, kind of direction indication to it. And what should happen as I get our prograde up. Now burning towards it. These should be getting closer. This is how, you know, I've done this a lot in the past. And this might take a couple, just one or two kind of connections here. So, okay, now we'll do another retrograde sort of burn in a second. Which will again kind of tie us closer together. And just like that, we'll be about six kilometers from it. 5.8, which is true about here now. And now we can just make sure we are gonna accelerate kind of towards it here. I want something manageable in terms of speed. So we'll go kind of no faster than uh, like 17 or so. And you can see we're gonna get a separation of 0.9 kilometers now. So you just kind of walk it closer to you. You can speed up time. You can see we're above them now, so they're technically catching up. All right, point retrograde. We'll kill our relative velocity. Okay, and now we point towards it again. And a rinse repeat. Always making sure your prograde marker is basically on that pink intersection point. And again, at this stage, since we're so close to each other, um, I'm just gonna keep the speeds very manageable. 15 meters a second, 20 meters a second, nothing too crazy. You can see here, closest is gonna be zero kilometers. So we're pulling up to it now. You guys probably can't see anything except for really the the selection indication of it. So we're about 10 seconds out. Slow down to like three meters a second. Three or four. Again, we have plenty of time. Patience is probably the best thing you can do you can have when it comes to rendezvous, docking anything like that in space you know if you if you rush it it's just not going to be too good all right so now we can go over to lumen kerman here there's no docking module so maybe we can eva okay 
Just like that. And let that space debris go. Come over to the hatch, which is, I think, on this side. I think? No? Where's the hatch on this? I'm used to kind of seeing, uh... I'm used to kind of seeing like a... Oh, there it is. There it is. Crew hatch. Grab. And board. So, there we go. We have rendezvoused, and we have transferred crew. Now, obviously, this one didn't require docking. That could have been a requirement or something, but uh, just not so much on this one. And now we just burn retrograde. And we will head back down to uh, Kerbin. Just like that. Very, very straightforward. Go ahead and detach. We'll just point retrograde the whole time. Um, let's see if it's able to hold this orientation just like our other one. If not, then I will use our SAS here. But I'm hoping it can point retrograde the whole time. Though this, you know, the ball has its own natural blader to it. Look at that. Both of them in here. This is a little bit more of a spacious capsule compared to what we've seen in the past. It's also far more detailed than kind of the base MK1 capsule. I, you know, I really hope they would have updated that a little bit. Let's, uh, maybe, maybe we can just uh, do an internal view real quick. Take a look back. Yep, they're enjoying the view. We have, uh, what's, what's going on out here? That's the ground. That's normal. Up here is sky. And I don't think there's, I think there's just three windows on this. So yeah, we just cruise on down out of the sky. And we should be fine. We should be at least. Their, her, their hair is clipping through the, the edge of the capsule. That can't be OSHA certified. Like at all. Okay. Decent rendezvous. Let's go ahead and get the drogue shoot. Kind of open here. So this has its own kind of staging component, which I always forget about um, up here. And so what will happen, once we slow down enough, the ball will become free of the frame. But we'll wait a little bit. It's kind of stuck on us right now, though. Come on. Let go. Let go. And there it goes. Woo! It's like, it's like magic. It has a lot of surface area. That thing can, like, fly. So now we just cruise on down to the surface. A uh, thousand meters. We'll open up the main chute. Uh, be fine with that. And we've made a decent amount of money from just a, a simple go up orbit sort of maneuver. These are gonna be, you know, some good income things for us. I'm still in orbit. I was worried that it was saying 100 some meters a second. The space debris did not come back down and hit us. I've had that happen before. But a nice, simple sort of mission here. Something, something a little bit different. And hopefully you guys learned a little bit about rendezvous. I'm not, you know, gonna be your best subject matter expert on that. So we can recover the vessel, complete that mission. Hey, Lumen Kermit, the engineer leveled up. Are they actually in our, hey, they are in our astronaut. Do you gain, is this how you can gain crew by doing rescue missions? That's cool.
Okay, so from here, looks like I got some mission controls. Um, fairy tourist, and that's something I really want to do. Bring a moonstone back to you. Explore the moon, which is just kind of orbit the moon. Yeah, so let's accept this one. So now our active contracts, we need to bring science data from space around the moon back, and we need to get into a proper orbit around the moon. That is a proper next goal, right? So last time we did a flyby, um, this is going to be a proper orbit, which is going to be a little bit different. So this is what we use to get to the moon. Let's um, yep, let's do some upgrades on it. Um, really wish I had a better fuel tank to use for this stage, but I kind of don't. Yeah, sure, five. Five is okay. Let's color this all um, good old Space X, just gr raw, raw metal sort of color on there. Very nice. Right, and we'll stick a good engine on it, and by good engine, I mean four engines on it. Because why have one engine when you could have four? All right, grab this local, fine. We'll bump it in one, we'll give it one rotation out. Okay. As the base of this rocket, we're already at 25, 36 meters a second. A delta V. And then for boosters, we can go back with thumpers again if we want. But I have a feeling that's not really gonna help us as much as I'd like it. I'd like to have almost six to 7,000 Delta V on this. I mean, you know, when in doubt, just get more boosters on there, right? Mm -hmm. Let's grab this. Okay, monitor propellant's taken off. Fine. Let's uh, maybe grab this. they're kind of together <laughs> heck yeah and then maybe we just do 70% thrust uh, I mean we have four engines do we really need a hundred percent thrust the whole time no 60% might be good 60% might be good and then we lose these four which we activate our main liquid stage and then we go to our upper stage here uh-huh uh uh-huh all right crew wise Jebediah hasn't been to the moon yet so let's take him to the moon this will hopefully be a quick mission with nothing going wrong. Nothing ever goes wrong in Kerbal Space Program. Okay. We'll rotate this around for a launch window for a direct course to the moon. And let's go. Yeah, I, fi I figured the thrust would be a little slow here on takeoff, but that's fine. I want the longer burn. It's worth it. I really just hope, and this is what I'm worried about with this, <coughs> it, since we don't have any Sepatrons, <coughs> I'm kind of worried about when I release these four boosters, are they going to destroy my engines in any way? 
because that is heavily possible and happen can happen a lot in Carbo Space Program. Okay, we're getting a weird rotation. I'm going to try and counteract that a little bit. Now you could also rotate your vehicle so that centrifugal force can uh, maybe take the boosters away, which is probably what I'm going to try and do. Just a small rotation. Okay, well, you know, can't always be perfect. Can't always be perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go to the moon now. Pointing to the moon, it is. Here we go. These four engines is going to very much dry up our supply of fuel, though. But give us a good amount of acceleration, which we need. We're wasting a fair amount of it in the lower atmosphere, though. Right, set the moon as target. And we basically just have to keep burning. Get us up there. I'm firing the engine now, even though we're still somewhat in atmosphere, just to maintain our speed. We don't want to lose too much of it. This is actually going out nicely. So we'll go full prograde. And we're going to try for a very high orbit around the moon. And if we can't get the orbit, we'll probably just abort that and uh, head back to a Kerbin. So ideally, I want to actually go on the opposite side of the moon. And the reason for that is it's going to provide a very large periaps to work with to circularize. All right, there we go. So we're going out to there. And then we will get a little bit of an orbit. as we proceed. And right now, worst case scenario, I mean, we have an intersect with the moon. We're already basically coming back to Kerbin. If I do this quick enough, um, is there any requirements for orbiting the moon? No, no, okay. So very straightforward sort of mission here. There we go, there we go. So I wanna go over to Periaps. All right, shove this down. Just go retrograde for a good little bit. Should throw our orbit just like that. Okay, we have orbited the moon, and also we are high above the moon, which is different than last time. So we can do, let's rotate the craft so you guys can see. Let's go ahead and do a crew report. And do an EVA report also. Cool. Maybe we can inspect our spacecraft a little bit. Jebediah out here turning on his headlamp. Making sure it all looks nominal. Set 
sun in the background. And we could hand fly, you know, just a trip around the moon and back to maybe get our engineer and scientist leveled up. You know, they don't they don't have the ability to use SAS, but um, pretty soon we'll need to bring them on missions. Okay, and we will board. Let's go ahead and gather some temperature. Okay, and before we take off, I don't want to fully orbit the moon. I'm going to use the energy to kind of do that. And then we can just point retrograde. Actually, this, uh, this orbit's a little rough. We might get another lunar intersect here, since it's kind of launching us out towards the Minmus orbit again. But we'll see. Now that we actually have flight trajectory, we can kind of see how this is gonna interact. Oh, there we go. You can see we're already swinging back around the backside and re-intersecting with the moon. And we can even slingshot our way back out and get, just get an escape trajectory here. So, you know, slingshotting yourself around, you know, it's pretty cool to do. Get a uh, Kerbin periaps there, Minmus, or a Moon periaps of like 238. Now we're crashing into the Moon. Um, I want to go down to like 40,000 meters here. Look at that orbit. There we go. So 37,000 meters. Plenty, plenty, plenty. All right, off we go now back to Kerbin. Got the moon fading away in the distance. Can we see Minmus anywhere? Minmus is uh, kind of off to our left. We might be able to see it out here. Sometimes you can, if the lighting condition is right, because it is a physical body out here. Unlike a lot of the backdrop, that's just like art. It's a physical, oh, no, I don't see it right now. Oh wait, no, there it is. You guys probably can't see it, but uh, literally this pixel that the very tip of my um, pointer is on is Minmus and it's moving about as fast as you guys can see my mouse moving right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, now that we are a decent ways up here, um, we're going to collect some more data. Okay, never mind. We're not going to collect any more data. Let's get maybe a little bit closer. Maybe like this. See if this kind of gives us any sort of data. Nope, no more data. And here we are. We're back at Kerbin, just like that. Okay, so at this stage, we'll go ahead and pop that off. We'll just speed up time. Let the good times roll now. It seems like I am almost always on the dark side of the planet. I apologize for that, but you know, I can't, I can't really do much about it. You get to watch a fireball that's very pretty every time you fly though. So that's good. And uh, you know, I come in here at this shallow type angle cause I'm just kind of used to wanting the spaceship to survive. The last episode where we came in at a good 70 degree, probably direct into Kerbin. That was scary, and I don't want to do that again. That was just very scary. Okay, we're not near any space center. We're just, we're just a rocket. Very bright light going around. You get to see the moon rise over the horizon there. Alright, we're slowing down. 
Slowing down. There we go. And turn off SAS. Don't need that anymore. And we'll land on the surface, which I don't know if I can collect surface samples yet. I don't remember if I researched that. But that would be good to know as soon as we land here. If we have it. I can turn on my little window light. Itty bitty window light. I think I upgraded the astronaut complex for EVAs and to collect surface samples. I think to collect the moon rocks or something like that, I need to upgrade the science bay, which um, I guess we can do once we're back in our base. And also spin any science that we have because we are going to get our first point into the next tech tree this episode. Boom, just like that. So we can hop out, EVA, come over here real quick. I guess I, guess I haven't gotten the um, surface sample. So that's, we, we, we need that if we're gonna be landing on the moon. We definitely need, need that. Here we go, we have 215 science. Decent amount of funds for sure, 800 some thousand. Um, so yeah, we'll upgrade the resource up item. Or the, the research, yep, yep, yep. That's fine, administration building. Nah, mission control, flight planning, yeah. Flight planning might be the requirement to get the control nodes. Sure, we'll get we'll upgrade the administration building. I'm kind of saving space plane hangar and runway for later. I find them to be kind of lesser things to upgrade because we'll just be flying around Kerbin for the most part. Um, all right, let's hop into the research bay. We'll get fuel systems. This is something that I really need because it gives us our fuel lines, also some better fuel tanks. And uh, let's go ahead and get the heavy rocketry. This is gonna really hopefully propel us in going further. And we might next episode just do a flyby of Minmus for some science um, and to test kind of long-term space flight capabilities. And from there, maybe we can um, start thinking about landing on the moon. So with that, thank you guys so much for coming out and watching this episode. Feel free to subscribe for more creative goodness such as this. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think of Kerbal Space Program. Are you enjoying the final release? And we'll see you all in the next episode.